Lloyd Vehicle Consulting t-shirts, mugs and stickers are now available. Please click on the Google link in the description below to purchase your very own. Good afternoon. Today is the 24th of April. It is uh, Drive It Day and uh, I'm here at Wellow Golf Club which is near Romsey in Hampshire with the Test Valley Motor Enthusiasts of uh, whom my lady wife and I are a member for uh, just a very brief slightly shambolic shuffle around um, the cars that uh, have been on the Drive It Day. I didn't actually go to the Drive Day myself because I uh, was coming back from Pride of Lombridge um, but I did arrive here for the little meal afterwards and now I've had some rum and raisin ice cream I think it's time for some slightly shambolic shuffling. This is an MG TF1500 very helpfully the TF1500 actually says on the side and it's got a beige leather interior so we're doing quite well already viewers dark green of beige leather interior mm, I do like a nice beige leather interior viewers so this will be one of the last TFs actually, uh, with the XPAG engine, it'll be about 1955 I think. Morris Minor 1000 Traveller, 6768 registration. Still actually got the uh, original type seats in here. A lot of the uh, minor owners actually put different seats in, but this has got the original ones. Very, very lovely condition. Excuse me, no, uh, no wood rot here. Very nice. 1988 Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit. I was just uh, talking to family that owns this just a bit earlier on. And uh, yeah, it's got a blue leather interior. Very kindly, they've left the windows open for me as well, so I can just uh, nip in and uh, take a look at that. Rolls-Royce of interiors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very much a kind of thing that uh, we'd like to see on the channel viewers. Uh, down the bonnet imperiously at the Spirit of Ecstasy. Lovely green Triumph stag here. We actually saw a few of these cars um, on New Year's Day when we have a little gathering for Test Valley Motor Enthusiasts. But uh, yeah, 7172 registration this one. So it's, I think it's a Mark 1 stag, this one. Excellent. Uh, a very reassuring nod there. 20s Rolls Royce. I always forget what model this is. Um, I, I never told the difference between a, a, a silver, sil, uh, um, silver Ghost and a, and a Phantom One. I can never tell the difference. It might even be a 2025. I don't actually know viewers. I'm not very good like that. If it was an early 20, it would have horizontal grill slats. This has got a vertical one, so I'm afraid I don't really know to be honest. But it's uh, absolutely lovely. I think this is an 89 um, Skoda Rapid 136 5 speed cabrio. A very, very rare car. And actually, I think these uh, plates are quite old. They're not the original dealer plates because that's a Peugeot dealer that doesn't exist anymore. But look, it's got a pre 1994 dialing code on it. So, um, <laughs> obviously, when the car was, uh, was sold back in the day. But yes, I mean, how many Skoda Rapid cabrios do you actually see? Oh, I shouldn't think it's very many. It's got it's got the rev counter and all kinds of exciting things in here. Sort of thing I like to have a go at viewers. I mean, I uh, don't know if I can. It depends on the sort of uh, willingness of uh, certain owners of, of cars. There's a little bit where I can have a go in them, but um, you know, we never know. Maybe one day. I don't know what this actually is. It's based on a two CV. I did do a registration check uh, quickly on this just to see what it was, but I have absolutely no idea. You can see here, it, um, it has a Citroen badge on the front just there. It's it's like a Meri, but it's like even more basic than a Meri. So I don't actually know what this is. It could just be like a one-off. Fortunately, it's got inertia real seat belts. What does that say on there? Uh, there we go. Yeah, I think it's actually, it's actually a, um, probably a special one. And then there we go, there's a Test Valley Motion Enthusiasts badge. So Triumph Roadster, Bergerac specification of course. I don't actually know if this is an 1800 or a, or a 2000, but I mean it's absolutely beautiful. 
and that does look like a very very sort of nice interior is that beige or biscuit viewers answer the comment section below i'm gonna to have to stop myself getting too excited because i'm not actually sure dicky seat's not folded out but there is one in there along with a rear windscreen for if you get the short straw and have to travel in the back that's what happens right let's uh, move on to a different part but the cars are all sort of spaced out around this car park along with the um, modern stuff so i'm gonna to have to be quite selective as to um, how i do this 1968 to 69, Morris Mine 1000 Traveller, another Traveller, <laughs> another beautiful restoration job on this, I mean, the wood on this, it looks new, latest steering wheel, post, um, I think October 64 steering wheel on this, so this would be 1100cc engine, the 1100cc ones came in at the same time as the, well, the 1100 was launched, the ADO 16 1100 in 1962. But yes, yeah, so I'm having a go in a, in a minor traveller with a similar colour to this at some point. I have been offered one by um, someone who has had many cars on the channel before, actually. But I won't tell you who that is. We'll have to leave you in suspense. 1964 Jaguar Mark II 3.4 litre. I do like this colour, viewers. It's sort of green with a green leather interior. That is um, absolutely and utterly beautiful. Mm. I feel like I want to become a villain in the old Avengers TV series because a lot of villains in the Avengers drove Mark II Jaguars just like they sort of used to in the Great Train Robbery at the time obviously Avengers ran from 61 to 69 so it would be about right for that but this one is absolutely, utterly beautiful 19... 70 to 71 MGB Roadster. So this is still the chrome bumper model, although it's got the uh, sort of later dashboard in it. I like this colour. I am hoping to do um, an MGB of almost this kind of uh, vintage, much later this year. It was delayed from July um, 2021 and. Um, been delayed a couple of times this year already, but it's going to happen, viewers. I'm going to enjoy that. 1976 to 7 MG Midget. This will be a 1500. Again, it's got a, a later dash in it, which kind of looks a bit sort of like a Triumph dash in some way. It's not really a surprise because that's a Triumph gearbox and it's got a Triumph engine in it. This is a 1500 engine, which was also used in the contemporary um, Dolomite and many other cars as well. Classic colour. It's very, very nice condition. Again, see the uh, square arches. They went sort of square and round depending on the model year of, uh, of these. Skoda's just leaving. Go rear engine goodness. That engine was used uh, in, in the Skoda Fabia until 2003 um, in 1.4 version. That's a 1289, I think, in that. Right. Um, MGTD. I think this is about 1951, I, I forget. I did actually ask the owner the last time I saw this car, which would have been uh, back in January on the New Year's Day event. Um, again, we've got the old Metro stop locks because you just never know who's watching, if somebody like me, because I'm watching. MGA 1600. This is a later one. I think it's about 1960, um, as far as I understand it. Beautiful because it's one of three um, MGAs on the, on the run today. I really wish I'd actually managed to take part in that because it sounds like it was a lot of fun. Yeah, there's also another red one which I'll show you in a moment. And of course we've got a beige leather interior. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. Riley 1.5. I think they made three different marks of these. They're very similar to a Morris Minor but sort of a bit more luxurious and with different bodywork. Even the doors are different than the door handles on these. But yes, because it's a Riley, we've got things like wood on the dashboard. And there we go. Um, we actually got a rev counter as well, although it's quite difficult to see because of reflection, but it does have a rev counter. So if I was to buy, you know, a Morris Minor based car, I think I'd be tempted by this one. One thing I would have to change for over static seatbelts. I don't really get on very well with static seatbelts. 
So this uh, one over here belongs to um, a chap who walking to social events like today, uh, it's Glenn. 1969, I think, uh, Triumph Herald 1360 convertible on some nice uh, mini lights. Again, it's very, very nice condition and the sort of wooden dash. It always reminds me of like a boat, the sort of amount of wood that you get in these Heralds. 1360 means you get sort of the Vitesse style front end, but of course you don't have quad headlamps, there are only twin headlamps on these. I wonder if those mirrors actually work, because there have been very few cars I've driven with actual wing mirrors, but actually they're useful, but it looks like they might be. Right, just a few more to go. One of the highlights of the uh, New Year's Day gathering was this Jaguar. It's a Jaguar 420. This is kind of like an S-Type, but it's uh, sort of facelifted, really. I think it, yeah, it's a 420. There we go. Um, 67, 68 registration. It's a manual. I really like it. I want to have a go at something like this, too. I don't know when I'm going to be able to, but uh, I would like to. It would be, be nice. Again, it depends, uh, you know, if somebody very kindly lets me, lets me do that. And that's got quite a few mirrors on it. It's got one there and one there. Interesting. So, excuse me, 1966 Humber Scepter. This is the uh, final generation of this shape, uh, based on Hillman Supermix. So similar as well to the uh, Singer Vogue. I always get confused between the, the Vogue and the Gazelle, but this uh, car is similar to the Vogue. Unlike the Supermix and the Vogue, the 1725cc versions of the Scepter retain this kind of original style um, roof, which is actually uh, more of just kind of late 50s American cars. But of course, built over in Coventry, I think these ones were. Um, and yes, it just lovely kind of period interior. There's even a little crack there so we can sort of see through, but not very well. Um, This actually came with four people in it, so it must be reasonably comfortable for the run. Next, uh, this car belongs to the, um, ch the chairman of the, of the club, he's called John. Some of you might have seen this before, actually. You can tell he's the chairman because he's actually got a Test Valley Motor Enthusiast sticker in his windscreen. A 68 Mustang, um, imported from California. I think it's got a 289 engine in it. I think it's an auto, this one. Yeah, it's an auto. I'm getting better viewers at remembering things. Not that uh, I can guarantee that it will happen. But yes, it's a beautiful car, this one. It's in really, really nice condition. Ooh, and there's a brand new Sandero as well. Anyway, let's not think about that. Let's go to the other car park and see what other delights are up there. MGTF, um, I think this is a 1250 actually, this one. Uh, well, it says it was actually just by 54, so around 1953, something like that. Now, uh, the later one, you saw that had the 1500 engine. This is the 1250, I think. So to be put the hood up for that one. Of course, I'm, I'm here as well, but I have been by far the newest car of the entire collection that you've seen. One thing you would uh, notice, though, is I do actually have my own channel stickers now and uh, you can order one of those by clicking the Google form link in the description below. Another uh, lovely Jaguar and Daimler, uh, Daimler V8 250. It's uh, similar to that Mark II Jaguar we would have seen earlier but uh, it's got the Daimler V8 2.5 engine in it. Um, 67, 68 registration this one. And I absolutely love this colour. It's another one of these kind of green on green affairs. And um, mm, it's rather nice. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching this uh, slightly shambolic shuffle around uh, the Tesla Motor Enthusiast Driver Day collection. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video, leave a comment below. It all very much helps out. And if you wish to become a channel member as well, that uh, is obviously wonderful. But please don't feel you have to. Thank you so much indeed once again.